it's pretty straightforward. So what we want, need to do is identify a uh, opening bar, you know, at a specific time. So it's probably, you know, the first opening bar, you know, but of course you can adjust the time to identify, you know, that opening bar for whatever your time zone would be. So here, let me, I should mark it here. Let's mark the bar. Let's see, I'll do 9.30 for Eastern time. There we go. Now that actually is not the opening bar for for me. Let me, that's a really small bar. Let's see, there we go. All right, yeah, we'll do the, the proper opening bar because the real opening bar for my time zone is a lot larger and makes a lot more sense. All right, so there it is, it, it's that bar right there. And so, yeah, we had quite the up and down today on that opening bar. All right, so this is on a five minute chart. Um, all right, so we want to um, basically, you know, enter, enter at the high and the low. So think of this, this is really a modified version of the opening range uh, system, right? So instead of a opening range, we just have a single bar uh, that's going to identify the range, you know, for the the current day's open, right? Um, so if we want, so we need to track. So the key to this question is tracking the high price or the low price, right, going forward, and seeing which direction price breaks out of it, right? Just like just like a traditional opening range system would do, right? So that really is the key, you know, since we're not using an opening range indicator, uh, which you, you could do actually, I mean, you yeah, if you have an opening range indicator, obviously you could s adjust the settings of that indicator to just identify a single bar. Um, but if you don't have that kind of indicator, we can actually use the uh, setup bar prices indicator right, that comes um, with Bloodhound now. So let, let me, let's open that up. So let's go into the indicators list and I'll show you the indicator I'm talking about. So if we go into the shark folder here and go into tools and it's the first one on the list, the Bloodhound, I'm sorry, no, that's the compatibility tester. The second one on the list, um, the Bloodhound setup bar prices indicator, right? So that's what we're going to use. Um, and the keyword to this indicator is setup bar, right? So um, so what is the setup bar, right? So in this particular case, the opening bar, right? So the first opening bar is going to be the setup bar. And then we're going to track the high and the low prices, uh, hence the name setup bar prices. So this indicator here tracks the prices of the setup bar. And so how do you define what the setup bar is? Well, this indicator, let's actually add it here. So I do need to add it to my chart. So this setup bar prices indicator actually loads in a Bloodhound template. So you actually use a Bloodhound file or a Bloodhound template to identify the setup bar. Right. So that's going to be the first thing we need to do is uh, create a, a very simple uh, Bloodhound system that identifies the, the opening bar for that day, right? And then we'll plug it into this indicator. And then this indicator will track the high and the low prices. And then we can use the setup bar prices indicator inside of Bloodhound to then identify right this the breakout right the the um so in today's case it'll be right the the breakdown or the cross down so um all right so that is what this yeah that's this question there um the long answer to it so with that let's get started here um oh yeah you know you will get this little warning here from the setup bar prices that there's no bloodhound template loaded into it so We'll just have to kind of ignore that for now. Um, and let's see. Oh, you know what? Oh, okay. I opened up the wrong workspace. All right. Let me get Bloodhound on this chart, too. There. 
All right, now that I have Bloodhound on here, okay, let's get this, let's get Bloodhound open. And also, let's see, that's our next question for the day. So let me go to the documentation here. So I'm going to go to um, open up the documentation page here. Um, right, so just go to support documentation. And let's see here. Let's go to, um, there we go, other indicators. And right there, the first one on the list there is the setup bar prices. We can click on that link, right? And that'll take you to the documentation for this. And it will give you further, you know, instructions there. And the thing I really wanted to point out is really pay attention to the tip and the warning there. So I'll kind of get into the warning here um, afterwards, um, after we uh, answer this here. So, but um, yeah, pay attention to that. And also there is a video here on this indicator too. So really this indicator is not really that complicated to use. Um, so it's a lot simpler you know than what this warning may make it out to be so so okay getting back to bloodhound let's see here all right so the first thing i need to do is um create a file name here so all right and let's see where's the bar we want there we go there's the bar we want let's see so how do we identify the opening bar um i'm going to use another indicator here and I'll show you in a minute so I'm gonna grab the the threshold solver let's connect that up and let's give this a name all right we'll just call it the opening bar all right and then we're gonna go into the input and um, change the SMA to the time block indicator all right so let's just type in time into the search box there and oh look at that it didn't find it interesting all right anyways the time block indicator is in the shark indicators folder and it's under tools ah maybe our search box can only search one folder deep well all right we'll have to investigate that and see if we can improve that but under shark indicators under tools there is the time block indicator um and uh the simple explanation of what is the time block indicator it was an indicator that identifies blocks of time uh, right so you can put a starting time in there and an ending time uh, basically this was like the first um, our first solution to um, something like the um, the time session solver um, so that you could transfer your time sessions from one computer to another computer uh, so that's a very short version but this time block indicator has a whole bunch of other extra little tools in it um, so for example you can identify the start bar right so what's the start bar well that's the starting time right what's the first bar of your starting time um, or you can identify the end bar so what's the end bar that's the the bar of that at the end of your time, right? Um, of course, you can identify, you know, the all the bars before the start bar, you know. So right, so you can see it has all these different periods of time that you can mix and match there, um, and also um, it will identify a trading holiday according to Ninja Trader's database, right? So this ind indicator will look inside of Ninja's database and it will um, it will find those holidays um, in, in Ninja's database there. So uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, look, you can also identify the first bar of the day. Um, and so that would be midnight, all right? The first bar after midnight uh, for your local time zone there. So anyways, okay, I don't wanna get too far involved here. So what we wanna identify um, is the start bar right and that's already checked and I do need to adjust this for my time zone there um, and 
um, oh, actually, you know what? Sorry. That actually is not the correct bar. Um, so, actually, that's 630. Interesting. Okay. That's not the correct bar. Um, we'll find it here in just a moment. So, all right. So, now that we have the time block indicator set up, now, um, oh, one last thing here. What you'll notice is that all of these outputs are a bool series. And a bool is a true or false, right? There's no value. It's true or false, which would be zero or one, right? Um, and so the, uh, the is bar will be equal a one or it'll be true for the 730 bar. Oh, actually, I think we're going to have to put I think we're going to have to put 735 since we want the five minute bar um, after the market. Um, well, yeah, the five minute bar, you know, includes 7, 730 and closes at 735. So I think that's actually what we want. So now I need to go into the rules window for the threshold solver. And what we need to identify here is when that bool equals a one, or it's true, right? Oh, so zero, so if we left it at zero, that would be false, um, and a one would be true. And we can adjust these to equals, right? So there we go. So that's what we want to identify is when that, what we're identifying here again let's go back into the indicator is when the is start bar true and it'll be true you know at the start time there all right so now let's there we go okay yep i did make a little mistake there there we go all right so that's the opening bar there so there we go so we've identified you know, the bar in question there, right, with this one simple solver. Now, this is the system that goes inside of the setup bar indicator here, right? So we're just going to save this out, and then uh, yeah, we'll just save that out right now. And then I'm going to go back into my indicators list, and find the setup bar prices indicator and then I'm going to load in right that opening bar bloodhound file that we just made let's load that in and we also need to select the logic template so I actually yeah I should have given this I should have named those the logic template here but I'll go back and do that here in a moment so now if I hit apply, right, there we go. Um, we can see, right, uh, these dashed lines here that are ad identifying the high and the low of the opening bar. And we can actually see the high and low of yesterday's opening bar as well. All right, so let's go in and let's just kind of fine tune things here. Um, so let's... Let's rename this logic template instead of leaving it at the generic new logic. Um, so we can, you know, give this, uh, you know, a very specific name here. Um, and we could also, you know, what's also mentioned is here, right? So maybe, you know, maybe you don't want to, uh, maybe you're not only identifying the, the first five minute, but maybe some days, you know, or you want to do some back testing or something like that. And so you want to identify the one minute or maybe the 15 minute right uh, bar there. So we could, you know, um, easily make a copy of this and go into the copy. And let's make this a 15 minute, um, right? Uh, a 15 minute at 7.30 there or the 7.30 open. So actually it's... Well, let's put the exact time in there. All right. So there, that'd be the 7:45 bar, 
and then we could go into actually we need to make a copy here sorry so let's get rid of this one so remember um, that solver and this solver were both the same so if I modify one then it mod it would have modified the other so I actually have to go in here and make a duplicate right there we go there so we'll be a little more specific with these two solvers here okay so there we go so we have uh, a five minute uh, opening five minute bar and an opening 15 minute bar for example so let me drag this one onto this into this logic template and then we just need to go into the time block indicator and we just need to adjust our start time so there you go so now it uh, so now we're identifying the 745 bar there so right now um, right if you notice right look it's identifying the 745 bar but obviously I'm still on a five minute chart right so if I left if I leave this on a five minute chart then it's not going to work correctly right it's going to open you know the third bar after the open so you know so this is not like universal here so we we would need to change our chart to the 15 minute chart right so as soon as I change it to the 15 minute chart there we go now it's identifying right the opening bar of the 15 minute chart there all right so all right let's go back to the five minute chart there we go and um, all right let me just make sure yeah everything's squared away here and yeah everything looks good okay so let me um, I'll just save this one more time and then I'm going to clear this out. So we're going to clear this out. All right. And now I'm going to start working in um, the workshop, um, the today's Bloodhound workshop file to identify right that, that breakout there. So let me put in today's workshop file name, which I can just grab it from there. All right, and delete that. There we go. So that's our standard workshop file name. Save that. And there we go. All right, so now we're good. So let me close out Bloodhound. And so now I need to go back into the indicators, right? And I, I want to go back into the setup bar prices indicator. And I need to reload, right, this Bloodhound file. So let's reload it. There we go. Okay. And so now when I look at the logic templates here, right, now I can see the five minute or the 15 minute opening bar there. So. All right, so we'll leave it on the five minute one. Um, yeah, because my chart is on the five minute. And call it good. So, all right. Now, let's see. Now I can let's get rid of my drawing objects there. And let's delete all that stuff. Right, there we go. Okay. Hmm. So now, um, yeah, this kind of poses a bit of a problem here so today's opening bar closed down um, and you know and this basically wants to enter a trade at the higher the low uh, let's see n ticks away so let's see hmm so we don't actually have like a crossover um, you know <laughs> if you know so if if the opening bar is this situation where it kind of where the close where it closes in the middle then we would actually get you know a crossover 
of the higher of the higher the low but here right it closes at the low and then actually yeah it closes at the low and then opens a little lower so hmm that's a little that's interesting um so this might actually you know it's to yeah to address this properly hmm it seems like yeah we're going to need uh two um let's see two two kind of systems here uh in, in one to make this work um let's see I'll, let me also make a quick adjustment let me turn off the auto scale there we go all right okay so let's address the um, yeah the issue that we have here on the chart which is right the bar closed basically at the very bottom or sometimes right the opening bar might close at the very top so let's see we need to identify that and just say okay and we need to generate a signal when that happens um, so let's see here so we can do that with a comparison solver so all right so um, we want to identify when the close of the bar is at the high or the low of the bar um, so let's see all right so input a is going to be price and input b is also going to be price right and let's see so input a will be the closing price of the bar and then input b that will be the high and the low of the bar like so and so now we need to open up the rules window and so if the close is um, let's see if the close is greater than or equal to the high so we're going to take the high minus um, and let's say I don't know I don't know what to do here but let's just say five uh, um, maybe a point okay well let's just go with one point I was going to go with five ticks but um, or maybe one point five points um, right so this will have to be something that you know that you kind of uh, figure out you know how how much of an offset do you need um, you know basically what you're asking yourself is um, you know how far away should the open be before you get a signal right and that would depend on basically the volatility of the instrument that you're trading right the more volatile the instrument is then the quicker right the instrument might move down and generate that signal so you might need more distance away so uh, let's see here all right so the for so that's for a long output right so if the close is greater than or equal to the high minus one and a half points right so you take the high minus one and a half points and if the close is greater than or equal to that offset distance then you're going to get a long signal and so for a short signal so here obviously the bar closed down so we need to generate a short signal so that would be the close would need to be um, let's see less than or equal to the low plus and let's put in one and a half points right. and if we hit apply yeah there we go right so that close you know looks like it's within a tick or two uh, looks like it's yeah within one tick of the low there and of course you now this is also going to identify you know basically any bar where the close uh, of that bar is next to the higher the low so this is you know obviously this is kind of a universal condition there so all right so we have that 
And we also, let's see, need to combine it um, with the setup bar um, prices indicator. So, and um, let's see, actually, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to modify this. Um, modify this so that instead of comparing the close of the bar to the high and the low of that bar, let's actually compare it to the setup bar uh, prices indicator. So let's open this up. So let's load in the setup bar prices indicator there. All right, so there's our setup bar prices indicator. And so now we need to load in the Bloodhound file that it's going to be using. All right, so that's going to be the right our opening bar file there. And let's see the select logic. So let's put it on the five minute um, opening bar there. And so next we need to figure out what plots are we looking at from this setup bar um, indicator. So we're looking at the high price for a long trade or the low price for a short trade. Okay. So, um, all right, let's see. Well, so if we do it this way, hmm, we're going to need some filtering. Um, as well. Yeah, we're going to need some filtering. Um, so if you, let's see. Yeah, okay. So let's look at this. So you notice, right, we have a bunch of short signals here. And that's because, right, yesterday's um, opening bar, right, high and low, well, the close, right, the close of all of these bars are less than, um, right, are less than the low of the setup bar prices plot. So, right. So the one thing about the setup bar prices indicators, you can't limit, you know, how far out it plots, right. And the whole purpose is to just keep plotting, you know, as long as necessary. Well, just keep plotting uh, until another signal comes in. So. All right, so we're gonna need hmm, a yeah, we're gonna need some kind of a limitation here. All right, so yeah, so let's let's add another threshold solver and let's see that or yeah, I'll I'll use a threshold solver. All right, and so with the threshold solver. We're going to use the time block um, indicator one more time here. All right. So let's see here. Let's put in. There we go. All right. So, oh, wrong time. There we go. Seven. There we go. All right. So what I did is I, you know, I adjusted the start time and the end time, right, for my uh, RTH, uh, the regular trading hours there. And so now I need to find the correct um, span of time here between times. So I want to know, right, so I want to know when these bars, or I want to identify when these bars are closing between, right, the start time and the end time there. Um, and, you know, you might also want to, you, you know, you could shorten the end time. You know, so let's say you only want to give the market a two hour window of time to break out of the first bar. Um, obviously, I'm sure the market's going to break out of the opening bar, you know, very quickly. So it's probably, uh, this probably has, will never ever happen that you need the entire day. Um, 
so I guess yeah in, in retrospect here let's adjust this uh, let's just give it say half an hour um, right so we'll go from 730 to 8 a.m. we'll give the market half an hour to break out of the uh, opening bars range there so that's probably something a little more reasonable um, there right so there we go well let's see here yeah I guess that's okay um, you know again just remember you know depending on exactly what you want to do you know you do have to go in and adjust these times accordingly to match you know the the times that you want this system to work with them so right just you know and it would be the same thing if if you were using an opening range indicator right as you're adjusting the opening range times you have to go in and adjust that indicator each time right uh, and adjust it for all the different times um, that you, that you know uh, for the specific type of system that you're looking at so all right um, so there we go um, uh, so we have essentially oh, so we need to finish setting up the rules window here There we go. Now, right when you're when you're using the time block indicator, right, almost all the time you need to generate a long and a short output from this solver, right? Because the time block indicator is not uh, a directional indicator, right? It's just time, and time doesn't tell you what direction to be trading in. Right, it's just a, a span of time um, identifier, right? And so therefore, when you're just when you're identifying something that's non-directional, right, that's non-trending, then almost all the time you want to output a long and a short from those kind of solvers that are identifying non-directional um, um, uh, conditions there. All right. And so now we can combine this together with an AND node, like so, <clears throat> like that. Right. And so now, there we go. So when the opening bar closes, let's get rid of that, right? So when the opening bar closes there, right, we get a signal right away. And so with that signal that you right, then you can put that signal into Blackbird and then set up your stop order, right? So yeah, the way this is phrased, yeah. So you'd be placing it um, an order n ticks away, I guess from yeah n ticks away from the higher the low the opening bar, um, and so I think that's all that's needed here. Let's kind of scan through the chart and just look at some other situations here yeah all right so there hmm yeah so this is probably gonna have to be a system um, that functions with the calculate set to on price change yeah, we'll probably, yeah, that would probably, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, because we can see here that, right, the opening bar didn't generate a signal. And so if you're using on bar close, well, the bar had closed several ticks below. But, you know, I don't know, uh, a lot of people like to wait for the bar to close during an opening range type of system to make sure that there is actually a close and that you don't end up with a wick kind of breaking you know the range so all right so it all depends on how you want to approach this um, something like that so um, let's see yeah so if you do change the calculate setting of bloodhound then essentially when this bar opened and as price moved down 
it would generate a signal. Um, let's see, it would generate a signal one and a half points away. Yeah, so remember this this comparison solver here. Actually, let's change the name here. There we go. All right, so we're identifying when the close is 1.5 points, you know, near either either the high or well actually this is let's see this would actually be the open bar or I don't know maybe we should call this the setup bar right high or low yeah there we go so really this is um, one and a half points near the setup bar um, yeah because if you look at input a it's the closing price but input B is now the setup bar indicator. Um, yeah, setup bar price is the indicator. So there we go. So as soon as the close, you know, moves down and got within um, one and a half points of the setup bar uh, indicator's, you know, low plot, then a short signal will be generated Right, and then you could get Blackbird to submit uh, a stop order uh, down there. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's also check another day back. Yeah, let's check this day. So I'm just checking to see if there might be any unusual kind of situations here that hasn't been accounted for you know within the bloodhound logic so yeah and that that should be that's pretty standard um, and let's see yeah there's our opening bar all right yeah we got a break to to the upside so yeah that should do it there okay I'll leave it at that all right, so the system was really simple, um, right? So we had to create, so let's summarize what we did here. So we had to create two Bloodhound templates, right? So this is the part where I'm going to, this is the part where for the setup bar prices indicator, I'm going to explain this warning here, right? So, um, so we created a separate file for the setup bar prices indicator. All right. So here's the setup bar prices indicator. And we created a separate Bloodhound file for the indicator. That is the critical piece, right? So now, of course, the the you know the, the system, you know, in this file. You know, we could have put it into the same uh, file that Bloodhound is actually running, but you run the danger of creating an infinite loop by accident. So you never want to actually put, right, so the, the logic that the setup bar prices indicator is using, you never want to put that logic that exact same logic in the Bloodhound file that Bloodhound is using uh, because you could accidentally create an infinite loop, right? So they should, so, so um, simply, the simple answer is, the simple thing to remember is the file, right, the Bloodhound file that the setup bar prices indicator will use needs to be a separate file, right? And to identify, you know, what is the setup bar? You know, what, whatever the logic is to identify the setup bar, that needs to be in a separate file from the logic that Bloodhound will use to then generate the trade signal after the setup bar. All right, so just keep those separate there. So, and actually, I need to finish. Uh, yeah, let me finish naming this logic template here. Let's see. There we go. Call this the opening bar signal. There we go. 
actually give this a proper name. There we go. Yep. Oh, it actually didn't hold it. Hold on, let's do this one more time. There we go. There we go. All right, now it's stuck. So go there. And if you want, if you need to get the pull down menu to update instantly, well, that's when Ninja Trader requires a reload in order to do that. So there we go. And there's our signal. All right, so back to our summary here. Um, let's see here. Let's give this threshold solver a name. Um, let's see, what did I give this? Let's call this a... Um, actually, it's more like a 25-minute um, window. There we go. There, 25-minute span of time. <clears throat> Um, all right, so there we go. So the comparison solver, you know, is um, identifying when the close of the bar, right, gets within or goes below the setup bar prices plot, right, high and low plot. Um, and then we also have a little time span filter so that way we don't get signals all day long, right? We'll just get signals within you know the first 25 minutes after the opening bar there or well including the opening bar so let's see all right so tommy's saying all right so uh something may cut off the signals um that happened now yeah, that happened after uh correct yeah so as i explained you know the length of time you know that obviously you can adjust that uh Let's see. So a signal counter blocker combo may be better. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, this this is one of those cases where, you know, there there could be multiple ways to um, uh, to build this system here. Um, so only allow the first signal, you know, whichever. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. So if you, um, yeah. So what Tommy's getting at is that um, right? This this solver here which basically um, places a limit, right? So this has a 25 minute window here or span of time that places a limit for the market to actually finally, you know, break out um, at some point. And so actually we can see here, actually this is a good example here. So, you know, the market looked like it was gonna break to the downside, but it never really did. And then, you're right, and then the span of time ended by the time the market actually did its true breakout, which was to the upside. And so we didn't get a long signal here. Um, you know, so using a time block, um, you know, to say to only, you know, block the first sh signal, you know, might not be the best solution either. Um, that's it, right? So this, so this, as I explained when I was building, you know, this the solver here, you know, you definitely have to look through the market and kind of figure out, you know, what how, how what what should the end time be? You know, how long do you actually need? You know, do you need a full hour before the market will finally make a breakout? You know, does it does the market ever really take that long? You know, I I doubt it. Um, you know, uh, I, I guess, yeah, to me this, well, let's see, yeah, this is a five minute chart. So the opening bar on some days might be really long. Yeah, so I guess, you know, maybe an hour is kind of reasonable. But, you know, the point is, is, you know, you can go in here and adjust this to whatever you think is necessary. You know, if you want to overextend it and give it two hours, you know, that's that's a personal decision there. So no problem, All right? So let's, yeah, so I extended that out to an hour, um, right? And so now let's look at the signals, right? So there we go. So we got short signals now and the long signals as well. And then we could easily add 
So let's go to our function nodes here and add a signal blocker like so. Put that in there. And with the signal blocker, let's see here. Uh, we might need to block. Uh, let's. All right, so we can count this. So we can block for one, two, three, four. All right, so we need to block for a maximum of 11 bars. All right, so I can just simply, you know, I, I, obviously I'm not going to, uh, you don't count the setup bar, the first bar. You only, you start counting after the very first bar. All right, so there's 12 bars total here. Um, so I would only need to block uh, at most 11 bars. So with that, with the signal blocker there, uh, let's set block signals four. We're gonna increment that up to 11 bars. The reset, um, yeah, we don't need any resets here. So let's turn all the resets off uh, just for good measure. Um, and there we have it, right? So there's our first short and there is our first long and we're good to go, right? So. So now, uh, yeah, so now a signal in, in each direction can get through um, if, if necessary there. So, um, all right, so there we go. So we added one little tweak to this system here uh, based on a comment. All right, so let's see what other, what other comments we might have on this or questions. So, all right, so I just answered Julius's question as well. So there you go. So this will allow, um, well, um, obviously without the signal blocker, I mean, all the signals are going to get through, right? So that's without the signal blocker. So, right, every signal gets through. So, and then with the signal blocker, right, the signal blocker um, doesn't block all signals, right? So when the, when the short signal comes in, um, actually, let's let's do this here. Let me put in point two. Yeah. So I like to turn on the the output actively blocking, right? And if you notice, this is actively blocking. And so I put in like a point two, maybe a point two five, right? So that way you can see, right? You can see this little minor output there. Let's move this forward. Right, so you see that little short output that's a 0.2 value and on the long side. So we can see when the signal blocker is blocking. So, right, so when you see this little short output, that's telling you that the short signals are being blocked on those bars. And then eventually, right, the signal blocker turns off and now it's no longer blocking a short output there. Right, because remember again, we're only blocking signals here for 11 bars. So once the signal blocker counts to 11 bars, it's no longer blocking short signals. And then we can also see that the signal blocker is not blocking long signals. Right, there's no long output here. But once a long signal comes through, now we can see the signal blocker is blocking both a long signal and a short signal for four bars here and then it stops blocking short signals but it is blocking long signals there yeah, at least for 11 more bars and now right and now we can actually and now we can see that the signal blocker is not blocking any signals anymore so right so that's kind of handy um, handy uh, to uh, when you're building your system and you're using a signal blocker, it is very handy to turn or to, to put in something like a point 0.1, a point 0.2 in the actively blocking output there. That way you can see when your signal blocker is blocking and not blocking. So it, it's especially necessary to use this output when you're using the reset, right? So if, if you are using any of these resets, um, then, you know, looking at this output, you know, uh, tells you when some kind of a reset signal came in, you know, so that way you can see what the state of your signal blocker is, whether it's blocking or not blocking. So 
really handy to really handy to use that. So, okay. So the other thing I wanted to yeah show you uh, quickly here um, is right. It well yeah. So the first thing is that when a short signal comes in, right, it's not blocking the long signals, right? Um, not until a long signal comes in. However, um, this is getting a little bit off topic here, but if you did want to block the long signals, so let's say you only want to see the first signal uh, of the day there, right? Uh, so you only want to see the first breakout and you want to ignore the, the second breakout in, in the opposite direction, then you have this block opposite signals option here. We can check this. And now, right, we can see that the signal blocker is blocking both short and long signals, right? Because we see that small little long output and that short short output. And so now the long signal has disappeared because it's now blocking the opposite signal as well. But we don't, we'll turn that off in this case here, so. Okay. Um, all right, so that was a part of Julius's question there. And all right, so it looks like Tommy has got what she needed.